Welcome back everybody. So these are some of my favorite decorative items or tchotchkes if you will. Um, to me, these are items that serve no function really. And it's kind of like a shelf topper or like uh, something that you put on top of a stack of books. So if it goes missing, you might not even notice it because you don't use it really. So um, these are some items that I love and have loved for years. Some of these I've talked about extensively. I made a video on my favorite ceramic items in my kitchen and uh, I got a lot of responses from people. Some people were saying that I should make one of my favorite non-functional ceramics. So I tried to put that together, but I didn't really have a big list. So there are some favorite non-functional ceramics here, but also just some glassware and some like um, brass stuff. First off, I have this right here. So this I got from Jason. So we met in ceramics and we were friends for a while and he sat right across from me one day and he was like, what should I make? And at the time I was making a ton of these donuts for wholesale and stuff. I was like, why don't you try making a donut? Cause it's like a double walled situation. So it's a little bit more of a challenge. It's not like making a cup or a bowl or a cylinder. So he did it under my guidance and he made such a beautiful donut and he dunked it like when he glazed it, he held it down for a really long time so it's nice and gloopy and it's so cute. It's like a little cake donut and the maple glaze looks perfect. This sits on my coffee table and sometimes when I'm watching TV I'll just grab it and just kind of like play around with it, fidget with it I guess. And I don't know, the glaze feels really nice, the texture is great so I love this. Next item I've talked about a lot, um, this is a Carl Albach brass Foot. And I got this because a few years ago, uh, my friends at Counter Space, at the time it was called County Limited, but I came in and worked for them um, during the holidays when they needed extra help. And they had this little brass foot and I loved it. So the owner just gave it to me and I just think it's the cutest thing. It has absolutely no function at all. It's like a super expensive item that has absolutely no use. It's like a paperweight basically. But for a while there, I was using it as a face, um, like, gua sha tool. Next thing I have here is a ceramic rattle from my friend Eleanor. And she makes a ton of these in, like, different colors, too. I just think it's so clever and cute. And she makes a bunch of different things, a ton of really cute things. Um, but her rattle collection is so good. She makes, um... I think like sushi rattles and or kimbap rattles and she made one that looks like a cucumber it looks so realistic um yeah her rattles are so fun and adorable so check her out next thing i have here i've talked about several times but this is a tile from arcosanti and i got this at their foundry and um i just think it's beautiful and i've always wanted to make tiles for like in ceramics for my fireplace. It's pretty heavy, so right now I'm using it as a paperweight. I just love the design of it and I'm excited to collect more of them or make some of my own and then have like a little art installation in my house. So Arcosanti, if you're ever in Arizona, you should definitely check that place out, get a little tour. It's just such a cool concept. This is a little critter from Robert Maxwell. If you go on eBay and look up Robert Maxwell, you'll find a bunch of different variations of this. I love this one. Sometimes I'll use it for salt, so I guess it's sort of a functional item, but mostly I'll just use it as a decorative piece. Whenever I think of my own work, I always think, well, I want to be someone like Robert Maxwell in the future, where people will go on eBay and resell my stuff and like still seek out my stuff, um, even when I'm not making it anymore. I found out about Robert Maxwell through my friend Kwa, who collects a bunch of his stuff. So my friend Kwa is a collector. He just collects a bunch of toys and a bunch of really cool things. And he inspires our friend group and um, yeah, he just has really good taste. And for a while there, he was collecting these little like wooden um, carved sailor guys. And I would find them at antique malls or antique stores and thrift stores every once in a while. Every time I found one, I'd get it for him. And then eventually he's like, hey, I already have these. I already have duplicates of that. Like. I don't think I need any more. So then I started collecting them for myself because they're really cool. And then I built a small collection. Eventually I was like, I need to start clearing out clutter. So I gave them all to one of my neighbors. And then I kept one for myself only because it's a brass version of the um, wooden ones. I guess I really like brass things. So it's just three brass 
tchotchkes here. I don't really know the story behind this. I'm sure it's just like a hobby that people do, just like um, building model cars. All right, so I know I talked about this before, but this is a little pea pod that my friend Joy made. And oh, I just think it's so cute. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, hey, can you make me one? I would totally pay for one. And so she did, and I think it's perfect. I love like running my fingers through this right here. It feels like a rosary or something. This one I've talked about so many times, but this is a little ceramic boob that my friend Hannah made ages ago, and she had a few of them around her house. And I was just so mesmerized by this. And this is before I even started doing ceramics. I was just like, wow, how did you make this? You know, I was just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I just thought it was perfect. So she ended up giving me one. It feels really cool to like hold and play around with. So. That's why I like it so much. She actually doesn't even do ceramics for a living. It's just her hobby. She's a true artist. But what she does for work is she makes like costumes and also wedding or bridal stuff. I know she did Tyler, the creator's um, suits and stuff. And um, yeah, she and her husband are such a good team. Next thing I have here is this Oliver Alto vase. So the one that he's known for is much bigger and it's meant to be like a flower vase and it's super cute. However, I don't really have flowers and I didn't really need something like that. So I was looking for a little dish. I think I got this off eBay. I actually have it tattooed on my arm right here. Last thing I have here is actually something that I made during the pandemic. I know this looks like nothing, but the story behind this is that there's a workshop in um, Venice, California, where this Japanese guy shows you how to whittle pieces of wood and make like basically this. And it's supposed to be like very meditative and relaxing and then you start off with really um, abrasive sandpaper and then you wear it down and then you smooth it out and then you're left with like a nub like this. I missed the workshop when it happened so I ended up just whittling on my own during the beginning of the pandemic which is such a bad time to do it because if I were to like chop off my finger or something like that I would have to go to the emergency room right? But I did it and it was such a relaxing hobby i guess um but yeah it was just so relaxing and fun to do and i just sat on my front porch and did it for a while jason calls this a canadian torture device like you hold it and you kind of just like get secrets out of people um canadian because they're ultra polite right and they wouldn't hurt anyone yeah it doesn't really do anything it's just a decorative item like everything else so those are my top 10 at the moment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or if you have any tchotchkes of your own that you want to talk about, please share and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.